All right, uh, my name is Michael Grimes, and um, my previous experience uh, through my education is that I have my bachelor's degree from Indiana University. I uh, got it in studio art and ceramics. Uh, my second bachelor's degree is from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh online division where I studied game art design. And just recently in this past September, I got my master's from Folsa University in project management and game design. Um, the presentation that I'm about to do for you is based on my thesis that I did at Full Sail, and it's called Operant Condition in MMOs. Over this past summer, I got it published at um, Game Career Guide, and you can actually reference that. Mike is actually posting it on Twitter and whatnot. And um, I apologize ahead of time for the direct verbatim um, reading from the thesis, and it has upper level vocabulary in it, which was medical terms. But I was asked to come and approach and do this presentation from a, uh, a research basis rather than a simplified version. So um, here we go. All right. OK, so uh, my problem statement is, how can developers make MMOs less addictive in order to avoid litigations within the immediate future? Um, research has shown that the DSM-5 is considering including internet addiction disorder within. And if this addiction is included, video game addiction may be included, resulting in possible warning labels on future titles for the online gaming community. If the inclusion passes in 2013, then the video game industry could potentially suffer. Warning labels that are similar to alcohol and tobacco labels could potentially lead to lower sales and lack of playability within the MMO genre, especially for younger players that would need parental consent in order to play and or purchase the games. Video game addiction or online internet addiction has been coined as having the same symptoms as pathological gambling, which is included in the DSM-4 right now. The hypothesis is that through understanding operant conditioning, Developers can make design choices that mitigate player sensation of becoming addicted to a game. So um, according to Strong, DR, and Collar CW from 2007, one of my references, the symptoms listed within the DSM-4 for pathological gambling would include the following. Increased preoccupation with gambling, needing to gamble with increasing amounts of money, loss of control, irritability when reducing gambling, Gambling to escape problems or relieve negative moods, chasing losses, lying to others about gambling, and relying on others for money to relieve gambling-related financial consequences, as well as relationship, job, and legal difficulties. Seemingly, the symptoms for pathological gambling could seem relatable to symptoms gained by players that felt they were becoming addicted to MMOs. An analysis of the criterion for pathological gambling would suggest that through certain criterion, such as an increased preoccupation with gambling, irritability when reducing gambling, gambling to escape problems or relieve negative moods, as well as relationship and job difficulties, would be highly comparable to situations that could arise from highly engaged and immersed players of the genre of MMO. Players that felt that they had symptoms of the criterion within the DSM-4 of gambling could be superimposed within a classification of being addicted to online gameplay. The end result of this analysis would be detrimental to the gaming industry and in the fact that warning labels as such would be a mandatory byproduct of any litigation scenarios. A direct result of an increased popularity of suing game developers for creating games that were of a highly addictive nature could possibly be, be an outcome as compared to other products within the consumer market, for example, cigarettes and alcohol. Understanding how operant condition could lead to such addictive properties would help to ensure that a justifiable entry within the DSM-5 would be mandatory, yet as a direct solution to avoid such a catastrophe, developers and players should fully understand the literature and research behind the psychological conditioning methods within. So how does it all work? How does operant conditioning work? Um, what causes internet addiction to video games? Um, it's basically known as operant conditioning. It's a process, this is a direct um, definition, uh, it's a process of behavior modification in which the likelihood of a specific behavior is increased or decreased through positive or negative reinforcement each time the behavior is exhibited so that the subject comes to associate the pleasure or displeasure of the reinforcement with the behavior. Yet, more specifically through my research, it all boils down to the expectation of reward theory. 
through the specific findings of research done on habitual drug addicts, we can see that the similarities between pathological gambling and drug abuse is the same. So how does it really work in MMOs? Um, the dopamine system was referred to as being the link between addictions as the dopamine producers have their cell bodies in two midbrain nuclei, the substantia nigra and the ventral tegmental area. The particular mesocorticolimbic neurons that project from the ventral tegmental areas to the nucleus acubens have been implicated in the reinforcing effects of addictive drugs as Pennell stated. Further information being provided illustrated the findings that natural reinforcers, reinforcers such as food and sex produce increases in the dopamine release similar to addictive drugs, and that the dopamine system could mediate the experience of reward or pleasure. The impending delivery of a reward could trigger dopamine release, which suggested that the dopamine system may be involved in the expectation of reward theory. The expectation of reward theory found that neurons responded to rewards only when the rewards were presented unpredictably. During the later stages of a conditioning experiment, the reward itself did not increase the activity of dopaminergic neurons, but the conditional stimulus that predicted the reward did. Understanding that the release of rewards on an intermittent schedule would allow an increase of dopamine from the brain, which in turn would increase a player's ability to further seek out the reward due to the latency and unexpected release from the stimuli. The direct effect of this process allows a player of video games to possibly have a sensation of addiction and would increase gameplay to allow the player to seek out more positive effects. A direct comparison to conditioned responses of rats to, oh, sorry, go back, of rats to illegal substances is inherently an equal comparison to how video games condition players for increased gameplay. So from the excerpt from my research, you can see that the expectation of reward theory is literally stating that the players are expecting the randomization of reward from the game. Therefore, the, re the release of dopamine is tricked into being released upon receipt of reward. The theory is the same when applied to gambling and therefore can literally be said that they are one in the same. Players of MMOs are expecting the reward and keep coming back expecting the reward they do so desire. If they are not given the reward after they return the following day, week, hour, ex after expecting a reward that they are after. All right, so um, to break it down a little bit more simplified, um, you can see that within all three of these schedules of reinforcement, you have the example of a continuous schedule, fixed interval schedule, and variable ratio schedule. Within the continuous schedule, this, this specific mission would be just a simple go out and kill rats or go out and kill wolves. Um, so you get their mission, and then as soon as you complete it, you get the reward. The extinction, extinction occurs when you get the reward. Positive reinforcement is gained once you actually get the reward, and negative reinforcement never occurs because you're always going to get the reward. A fixed interval schedule is an example of this is to go out into an area in the game and just go ahead and kill a bunch of things and it's possible that something is going to drop like a piece of armor or a weapon but it's a very you know middle medium chance of something actually dropping so you go out you grind mobs and sometimes a weapon or item or armor will drop um, the extinction extinction occurs when the item that you want is actually given to you positive reinforcement is gained when you actually get the reward, and negative reinforcement is gained when you never get the reward. So if you go out and you kill something for forever and ever and ever, and you never get it, then you're probably going to stop doing the actual schedule. Um, variable racial schedule is um, basically go into the raid scenario or the dungeon scenario, and you're basically going to keep doing the actual dungeon or the mission within before or you're doing it until you get the reward. So if you kill an end boss, the item that you want isn't going to drop, then you're going to keep coming back to the actual dungeon or the, or the actual raid. So um, in this, you do a mission, dungeon, or raid, and you sometimes get the reward. So extinction, extinction occurs when you actually gain the reward you want. Positive reinforcement is gained when you get the reward, and negative reinforcement is gained whenever you actually do not get the reward. So, um, from all of that, 
these are my solutions to mitigate the addiction within video games for a possible reduction in the probability that it will be included within the DSM-4. And this is a list of my heuristics that some are actually being integrated within current MMOs and um, some are just my versions of what I thought would actually be a solution to um, proposing uh, solution of not actually being included within the DSM-5. So, um, through a thorough understanding of operant conditioning within games, the knowledge instills a concept of how the learning behaviors occur within the genre of MMOs. Ideally, upon successful knowledge gained, certain solutions come to mind in which would be potential mitigation design solutions for game developers to embrace while designing games within the genre. The proposed method should instill a design solution in order to mitigate the effects of conditioning within games in order to avoid the potential negative reactions from the community. Yet ideally, the method should be incorporated through all tacets of game design. The methods introduced should be understood by all developers whether or not utilized as education will improve game design even if issues are not apparent. As seen within the table, Proposed heuristics would implore the readjustment of conditioning methods within MMOs, such as the reduction of reward schedules, variable reinforcement schedules, and fixed interval schedules. The game designers that were creating content within the genre would find that allowing a player to gain a reward on a much quicker basis would promote a method of conditioning reduction. The ability for a player to receive certain rewards within a much faster rate would allow the reduction of play time in order to reduce the effects of apparent addictive behaviors. The player that seemingly gained the rewards at a much faster rate at that time could spend their excess free time planning on how to effectively learn the strategies within various dungeons or raids, allowing the player more freedom from gameplay and the ability to do research when not in intense gameplay sessions would increase the amount of time spent playing the game that would be successful rather than a continuous rate of failure. The failure rate of achieving rewards gained within harder content would be reduced as the player that had spent time doing research will be much better prepared for a much more difficult encounter. The hedonic adaptation techniques would allow the player a much more beneficial and positive gameplay experience rather than to consistently immerse themselves within the game environment. True, players that were logged within the game during normal gameplay periods wouldn't be playing the content the developers would want them Yet, if players spent more time focusing on the harder content, the justification of the process would be a much more healthy sense of gameplay rather than an eventual case of potential addiction. The actual repercussions of this adjustment of game design would enable players to have a healthier sense of gameplay. Yet, if there were appropriate marketing strategies taking place, the amount of new players coming into the game wouldn't affect any of the more experienced players. Furthermore, if game developers would restrict the rewards to a certain period of time, such as weekends or holidays, players would feel as if the benefit of gaining the better rewards during those periods would be much worthier in comparison to consistently immersing themselves within the game with a possible chance of gaining the reward. The developer would see this as an opportunity to have many more players logged into the game as promotional items and a higher drop rate would increase play time. During this period, the readjustment of conditioning methods within the game would still allow a healthy sense of gameplay in order to reduce the effects of a possible addiction. Adjusting gameplay design within the user interface to allow the players to control a set time limit of play within a potential punishment factor involved would be a method of prevention for players that felt they were already sensing a form of addiction within the game. Parents would find this useful as a player would be restricted to playing the game to a certain period of time, yet if they refused to exit the game, all items gained during that gameplay period would be, de would be deleted by the game. The negative effects of this design mechanic could be a reduction in player base, yet ideally this would be a method of conditioning the players in order to alleviate previous symptoms. Uh, within the final few heuristics uh, towards the bottom of the table, Developers could redesign the reward schedules to allow the player to receive all weekly rewards within one long period of gameplay, which is being done in World of Warcraft right now. Um, the player would, have no, would normally have to log into the game every day in order to receive the daily tokens in order to purchase upgrades for their avatar, yet ideally adjusting the reward schedules to allowing the player to log in once for the week would allow the player a much more healthy sense of gameplay. 
Finally, developers adjusting the gameplay mechanic within the user interface in order to allow the player to set their gameplay time and then be kicked out of the game with a 12 hour lockout period. The player that felt they were sensing a form of addiction to the game would now be offered the chance to take control of the situation and in a sense be self-medicating. Other methodologies such as hedonic adaptation and pseudo-hedonic editing would encourage a healthier sense of gameplay as a basis of the theories proposed intermittent breaks while doing a certain mediocre task. The players within the genre of MMO would not find would find that allowing themselves to take a break other than to rest in an inn in order to gain rest experience for a higher level of experience gained would find that the brief or longer time away from the game would seemingly allow a healthier sense of gameplay. A healthier sense of gameplay is a term that would be used to describe the ability to balance gameplay with social life in order to avoid a potential sensation of addiction to the gameplay experience. The developers would see this as a method of prevention and a possible design mechanic to allow to allow players to gain a much more significant reward the longer they took a break if their previous gameplay session was exceptionally long. The length of time to recuperate from the player would depend on the player themselves, yet in theory, the developer shouldn't feel a repercussion as long as the amount of new players joining the game was maintained. If the game content is losing its player base, then certain actions to increase subscriptions would have to be incorporated into the model. And currently, this focus on how to prevent a potential sense of addiction to the genre and methods of reduction. And here are my references, which are actually listed within the thesis that is on the publication that Mike actually posted on Twitter and most likely within the thread of this. And now I'm going to open the floor for Q&A, and there's my contact info if you would like to get in touch with me afterwards. Hey, thanks, Michael. That was really great. Um, can you go back to slide nine for us? Sure. Uh, one of the questions really was, if you could go back to slide nine and uh, then full screen it so that everyone could, could really read it, um, the type is quite small. Okay. I'm trying to... <laughs> Okay. I am not seeing it through the uh, webinar software. How to full screen. Uh, what happens if you just press F5 in your viewer? Right. Mm, nothing. nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll, do we have access to these slides? Um, I think I did give it to Heather. Okay. So we'll make, this, we'll make this available for you guys so that you can see it. Um, Michael, can I, uh, let's, let me ask you some of the questions that have come in. Um, David F. asked, do you take into account the social part of MMOs where people feel a compulsion to help others, um, i.e. your guild, uh, to get their awards like loots and, and achievements? Now, what's the actual question? Could you repeat it? Please? Sure. Do you take into account the social part of MMOs where people feel a compulsion to help others, i.e. your guild, uh, get their awards loot slash achievements. Now, is the question focused on um, how, well, it's confusing to me because are they asking if I'm including the social aspect of the MMOs in order to help addicting behaviors or are we just discussing the concept of how social socialness within MMOs are a good thing? I'm, I'm confused. Well, I think let's, uh, without trying to put words into uh, David's mouth, um, I think you can take this question where you'd like. I mean, I think one, one possible direction would be uh, how, if you, you know, based on your sort of central thesis of trying to avoid the, the you know, the, the mechanisms by which people get addicted, um, uh, what, what, some of this compulsion, some of this sort of addictive nature is sort of meta to the game, right? There is 
uh, this compulsion to help other actual people outside of the of the the, the feedback loop that the game itself is giving you. Um, and is there some? Do you have some research or thoughts on on that nature of it? No, um, the majority of my research was just focused on methods of reducing um, the theories of, of addiction and within scenarios of Asian cultures where multiple groups of people would play online MMOs and then it would cause them to um, get into a state where they passed away. Um, that's where some of the research starts out within the actual thesis, but the social aspect of it never came across to me as being a negative attribute. It was always a social um, social concept, and especially in comparison to um, the female population that plays it, they tend to get more addicted to the social aspect rather than the um, you know constant grind for rewards and the expectation of rewards. So I never saw it as a negative thing. Okay, so another follow-up question uh, by David was, uh, is this restricted purely to MMOs or also in RPGs like Skyrim where rewards like loot and skills um, are also gained from long sessions or uh, another example is Call of Duty where you level up and gain weapons, etc. So is this simply a facet of the Bartle Achiever type game? I think it could actually be implemented into the console-based systems, but my research was more focused on the online community. Um, I don't necessarily think the addiction factors come into play within the console systems because of the fact that you can turn it off. And even though you can turn off the game within an online community, you have so many other factors coming into play with the social aspect and then just like going in and having the random rewards drop for you in an MMO setting. You can play with people online, but that's usually just the social aspect where you're getting on headsets and talking to them within the console systems. So it could be integrated into it, but um, I'm more of an MMO player. So let's just say that this, this should be done within MMOs initially. Okay, a question from uh, Heather De Decker Davis. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on the current stance that game addiction can be leveraged to serve education? Hmm. Game addiction can be leveraged to serve education. Can she ask it again? Like, simplify it for me, please. Uh, well, let's follow up to see if if uh, I'm able to get another follow up from her. Uh, but let's. So I'll just move on to Jason L's question. Do you feel a more okay. consumable nature? Uh, sorry, do you feel a more consumable nature of reward would help or hurt the addictive nature of these games? In the sense of marketing? Um, um, if you feel you have an answer to that, why don't you take it in that direction? Okay. Um, it would depend on the actual person purchasing the, the reward. Um, I know that the majority of people, and this is just a generalization, but when people purchase games, MMOs and whatnot, when they first come out, it, it's, I don't know the statistics on it as far as like who actually purchases the, um, the collector's edition in comparison to the actual you know, normal edition. But I don't think that people would become addicted other than you know, maybe if they were a true collector where they needed to purchase the collector's addiction edition. And, um, so in that sense, I think I would have to research it more so prior to um, giving a validated response because it would just be a generalization. Okay. Um, Michael, is your entire thesis that uh, Game Career Guide link or do you have a full, a sort of more complete thesis available online? No, that's the actual complete thesis. The, the thesis is a 40-page, um, double-spaced, um, the requirements from Full Sail University. It's not a 200 to 300-page thesis, no. Um, I could give you the, or give to Heather for, to give other people a copy of the original thesis. Um, they made it single-spaced on the Game Career Guide. Okay. So. Uh Emil, that, uh, the link that I sent out earlier is, um, is everything you need, it sounds like. Uh, so let me move on to Jessica K's question. 
A lot of these things you're saying sound great, but I can't imagine game companies actually implementing them because it seems likely to decrease their income, at least short term. Do you really think there's enough incentive to make companies cut out the conditioning? Yeah, because like I said, in World of Warcraft, they are integrating elements. I mean, it's basically the same formula. You just have to like use what is the theory or the actual formula for conditioning and then you just need to go in and adjust it, you know, depending on what you want to do. You like lower the amount of reward schedules or you increase them, just like within World of Warcraft now, in order to alleviate, you know, player mentality of like playing the game in excess, they allowed you to go ahead and gain all of your tokens um, within, you know, a two day period. If you had only two days to gain a week's worth, where a couple um I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess six months ago, um, you would have to play every day in order to gain your rewards. So you could get 100 tokens for each dungeon. After you did it that one day, then you couldn't get them anymore until the next 24 hours. So World of Warcraft is allowing you net right now um, to go ahead and gain all your tokens within you know one week. But you, you don't have to wait for each 24 24 hour installment, you can go ahead and just like get them all if you have the time for two days straight, you can do it. So they are implementing the majority of these um, and I don't think it necessarily would reduce player base, it would just allow people to come in, um, like I said, uh, certain people that have already gotten their tokens for the week could go ahead and practice, you know, the higher level raids or, or whatnot. So if, if they actually did all of these heuristics, they could go ahead and make dungeons and instances and raids a little bit more harder. So then the hardcore players could practice that, whereas the other people who just wanted to catch up on gear could go ahead and like get all their tokens within a 24-hour window. So there's, there's, I don't think it would actually be a reduction because it's pretty much the same formula and you could consistently just adapt it minutely because it's just a method of increasing gameplay and reducing factors of of addiction at the same time. So, yeah. All right, Michael, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to give you uh, one last question from Paul E. Uh, and then everyone else, I'm going to forward the the remaining questions to Michael, and then if he is able to respond to them, um, I will. We will end up posting those responses. So, uh, Michael from Paul, uh, do MMOs have something to learn from Zynga? <laughs> um, I've only studied the microtransaction model um, somewhat, and I'm mainly an MMO player, but the impulse factor with online um, content, um, like impulse shopping, sure. I mean, the free-to-play model utilizes impulse buys within their main websites. So the microtransaction model is being integrated in the free-to-play model, but the AAA titles don't necessarily use it. Um, so I think they already did. 